Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Keystone Passport 240BH. This is a very similar floor plan to what they had before the 2400BH. However, with the 2019 kind of 2020 model year, they phased out the old floor plans, phased in the new one. Uh, but essentially, it is the same floor plan as the 2400. Let's take a look right over here at the kitchen. You'll notice the seamless countertops. So you don't have any T-mold, don't have to worry about the corners or anything popping off. High-rise pull-out faucet in a lightweight camper like this, that's really nice. A lot of times it'll just be a normal faucet, you don't get the pull-out. So I like the fact they're putting some higher-end amenities in a lighter weight camper. Sink top cover is a cutting board, so that way you can flip it over, use that as a cutting board. Deep single basin undermount stainless steel sink. Because you have the seamless countertops, it allows you to undermount that bowl. Over to the side, three burner cooktop, glass cover on here so that we can use this as prep space as well as of course the sink with the cover on there. Flip this up and back to access those three burners. The knobs do light up and you also have the oven underneath. Directly underneath the oven, you'll see deep storage right there so plenty of space for pots and pans. And underneath the sink is a dedicated place for a trash can. Something else that they changed in the Passport for the 2020 before, you'd have a big door here with the drawers inside. They've now gone to a more traditional style drawer here. I personally like this a little bit better. It just It's a lot easier to find in the kitchen, makes a lot more sense. Otherwise, when guests come over, they're not sure you know where to find your flatware. So that's just a little bit easier to use. Right up here, we'll open that up just to kind of show you again, good storage right over there. Right down below is a courtesy light, so that way you can just have that on. So if you're coming in late at night, or if you have, uh, you know, if the kids need to wake up and use the bathroom, something like that, maybe just need a night light, that's a great one to use. Right up top here is your main control panel. The water heater does run off both propane and electric, and you can turn both of those on for faster recovery. Storage across the top with the frosted glass on there. It's almost a, a whiteout glass, that way you can't see what's behind there. Pretty standard pantry size storage. Microwave, hood with a light and fan next to that. And then moving back a little bit further is the Dometic fridge freezer combo with the stainless steel looking panels. Open that up so you can take a look at the size inside. Plenty of room. This one does run off both propane and electric and also has automatic switch over. Right back here are your double over double bunks. Teddy bear bunk series, you can see how nice and thick the mattresses are, so that way uh, the kiddos will be comfortable. Or if you have adults sleeping up here, uh, the, I believe they're 74 inch bunks, so that way you do have enough space for adults to sleep up there. You'll also notice that you have electrical outlets as well as dual USB ports in both the top and bottom bunks. So that way if it's a rainy day, the kids need to plug in their cell phones, tablets, whatever, you have the capability to do that. Privacy curtain here and storage underneath the bottom bunk. Right back in the corner is the bathroom. We'll open this up, take a look back here. Foot flush lever toilet. I'll take a seat. You can see that I have uh, sufficient leg room. If you have really long legs, this right in front may get in your way a little bit, but it's just as easy to put your feet up if you have to. Plenty of shoulder space here. Sink over in the corner with a little bit of storage underneath. Electrical outlet, mirrored medicine cabinet, good storage in that. Vent fan up top with an LED light. And then over, uh, over on the back wall is your tub shower. It's nice having a tub when you have a bunk model. That way if you have smaller kids you want to give a bath to, you can. I'm six foot tall. You can see if I stand underneath the skylight, I do have a little bit of space. If you're much taller than that, if you're 6'2 or any taller, you'll probably have to bend down. You do have the hand wand there to make showering up a, a little bit easier. And because you have the tub, it has the higher threshold wall, so you have a better chance for that curtain to stay in there and not, you know, get water all over the place as you're showering. Right outside the bathroom, you have the classic kind of versatile storage space. You'll see the hanging rod up top if you want a wardrobe or a coat closet. Otherwise, you have the removable shelves. You can use those for kids' clothes. You can use it for... Uh, pantry, linen closet, really whatever you want. You'll also notice another courtesy light right over there. Slide out U-shaped dinette. This helps open up your main living space as well as give you basically the main seating space in this camper. Uh, this does drop down into a bed for excellent additional sleeping space. If you uh, have any adult guests that are staying, you can sleep two adults here. 
course they'll have to cuddle, but it, it is uh, definitely manageable. You have a leather wrap both on the back as well as the seat bottom, so it is easier to clean. Easy access storage underneath, you can see the doors there. Open that up so you can kind of take a peek. Windows all the way around to let in a lot of natural light, couple LED lights up above, and those LED lights are on a dimmer switch. That is also new. Uh, we've seen that on some other Keystone models. Cougar has it, Sprinter started putting it on there. Now the Passport has it on there as well. A couple quick things on the ceiling I want to touch on. You'll notice your speakers inside. I'll show you that multimedia center in just a second. Right up top is Wi-Fi access. So if you want to have Wi-Fi while you're on the road, it does require a cellular plan, but you can attach that to, I believe it's either Verizon or AT&T. And that way you will have uh, basically internet anywhere you have cell signal for, of course, a monthly fee. Right up top is your AC unit that is ducted throughout the camper, 13.5K BTU AC. In the floor, you have ducted, uh, your ducted furnace, your heat work there, that's a 30,000 BTU furnace in here as well. The Passport does come with a TV, which honestly is pretty rare, especially in a lighter weight unit. A lot of times they'll just have the opening here, but this one does come with it. Attached to it is your multimedia center. You have an HDMI port on there. This controls the speakers in here as well as the ones outside. You'll notice storage both up top as well as down below. If we move up into the bedroom, one of the things I love about the Passport is the bed itself. You have a 60 by 80 true residential queen size bed. Again, pretty rare in a lighter weight camper. A lot of times you have the RV queen and if you're a taller person, your feet hang off, which is super irritating. Not the case here. You will see very large nightstands on both sides of the bed, as well as mirrored wardrobes right up top. You'll notice the hanging rod there, decorative wall on the backside for the headboard. And the doors, you have the sliding kind of pocket style doors for some extra privacy instead of a curtain. Just gives you, you know, a little bit more of a, a residential feel. You'll also see it opens up that space for a TV if you want a TV in the bedroom. And lastly, the bed does lift up so there is storage underneath it. Right up front are your two 20 pound propane tanks with the cover. Directly behind that, rails for your battery. And over to the side there is solar prep. So if you want solar, simply buy portable panels, plug it in right there. It's already pre-wired and it'll trickle charge your battery. You will see the diamond dutch plating on the front to help protect the front end from rocks and debris that get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And if you take a look at the frame, this is a BAL huck bolt frame. You will see the huck bolts there. The nice thing about huck bolts is it is an easier frame to repair in the event it gets damaged. And also, the number one place your frame generally starts to rust at is right at a weld joint. So by helping to eliminate the welds, it helps to eliminate the chances for rust to start in that spot. Moving around to the side, we'll open up the pass-through storage door. It is magnetic, so it stays up there nice and easy. We take a look there, you will see it is a huge pass-through here. Massive doors. You have the motion sensor lights in there as well, so that way, you can set it uh, either permanently on, permanently off, or the motion setting. So when you open it up, it obviously turns on so you can see what's in there. But again, I, I enjoy the magnetic latches, especially on bunk models. It's usually the kids that forget about a plastic latch. And this way they can just shut it. You don't have any plastic latches or anything ripping out of your sidewall. Power awning, touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to have it go back in with an LED light strip. Two outside speakers, which are controlled by that multimedia center inside. And that unit is Bluetooth capable. Three folding steps for your main entryway here, plus a grab handle for some added control. Fully laminated Phylon sidewalls there. This one does have the extended season camping package on there. What it has is a fully enclosed, insulated, and heated underbelly. So as long as you're running the furnace, it will blow that air down underneath to help prevent your tanks and stuff from freezing. Now remember that it is extended season, it's not four season. I wouldn't recommend going out, you know, if it's negative 10 out. But if you're camping, you know, early spring, late fall, should be able to handle it no problem. This one has the load equalization axles. If you take a look, you'll see that they are further apart than most travel trailers. It's basically a spread axle system. And the advantage of that is you get better towability. As you're going down the road, having that, the axles set farther apart means it will get less sway. You also have the aluminum alloy wheels on this coach. That is an option on the SL series. It comes standard on the GT. 
but I personally would definitely do it. Not only does it look nicer, but also helps prevent them from rusting. So it'll stay looking nicer a lot longer. And if you plan on reselling it, you definitely want your camper looking nice. You'll also see right here, you have electrical outlet, pretty self-explanatory there. Outside kitchen, again, you have the covered hinge magnetic latch on here. It's one of my favorite parts about a bunk model. Right there is your outside refrigerator for your beverages, condiments, you have storage up top. We'll unlock this, pull that out. You just lock this in place on both sides. You will see your faucet here with a little wash basin. It's not plumbed, but that's no big deal. You just take this, dump it out when you're done using it. Open that up, two burner cooktop, in case you wanna do a little bit of cooking outside. Making our way around to the back here. You'll see your tire mounted right there. So great thing about this, it's probably one of the easiest places to get to it. Hopefully you never have to use it, but if you do, right there it is. Because this one doesn't have a bumper, you also have this little uh, section right here. You can unscrew this door. There's a little spot to store your sewer hose right in there, so that way it's not rolling around with everything up front. Right on the back, this is your key TV system. Makes hooking up TV super simple. Just take your part cable, plug it in there. If you have satellite, plug it in there, and it'll automatically feed to that TV inside. Super easy to use. Take a look at the roof on here. You will notice that it has a curved roof, so that way your water will naturally run off to the sides. You have gutters on both sides, so that way it takes the water to the front and the back, helping to reduce the streaks that you will have coming down the sidewall. Also has the Super Alpha Flex roof on there, which is a great roof system. It's pretty durable when it comes to a roof membrane on RVs. Right back here is a black tank flush to help wash out your black tank when you're done using it. That way you don't have to stick a hose down your toilet to do it. Your 30 amp power cord is tucked away right there. Just open that up, take your power cord, plug it in, good to go. And directly underneath is your shower with both hot and cold water access. On the front side is both of your water hookups in front of the slide here. That will be of course both your fresh water tank fill as well as your city water hookup. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Keystone Passport 240BH. If you're interested in this family camper and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.